everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Mike Delicio. Today we're taking a look at a game that sold on sheer cuteness. <laughs> no, that is not even remotely a lie. No, yeah. it definitely sold on its cuteness. It leaned you know, even, into the cute. Even I'm sold on the cuteness, and that's rare. I'm not arguing that I think it's great looking. And you don't like cute things? Okay, I like cute things. I'm just not usually sold on she games likes, because of cuteness. I'm going to let this go on its own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, this definitely... There was an artist that this game was based on, right? Yes. I mean, I mean, the art is clearly drawn for the game. Mm -hmm. But yes. it's because they saw the art, they wanted, they made a game around it and all. But I don't know that I've ever heard someone go, ooh, I can't wait to play this game because of the mechanisms I heard about. It is straight up, ooh, I want to be that dragon. Of course. Bread dragon. Meat dragon. Is Ocean it, dragon. Is it a bread dragon or a honey dragon? We no, had no. a long debate about this. Honey what's badger. The, what's the debate? It's got bread in the game. Yeah. There's honey in the game. There's honey on the bread. Is, That's I thought butter. that was butter. You know what? Butter Mike, toast. Mike Betty shows how to butter, play. The I'll show you how to play. I'll show you plenty of bread. Okay, here we see a starting setup for a four-player game of Flamecraft. And the first thing I want to point out is that you are looking at an upgraded version of the game. This was a Kickstarter, and uh, this has some components that are kind of deluxified, the, the things that are different. You have metal coins instead of uh, cardboard coins. You've got screen-printed wooden components instead of cardboard, excuse me, uh, resources instead of cardboard resources. And you've got these plastic minis to represent your dragons. In the standard game, the dragons would be still these very nice screen printed wooden meeples. So just to kind of point that out, that there are some upgraded bits in this version of the game, depending upon which version you have, uh, it may look a little bit different. All right, on your turn, you are trying to either gather or enchant. You're gonna be doing one of these two things, which is laid out here for you on this uh, player aid card, with the ultimate goal of gaining the most reputation, which is tracked by this little hearts marker around the board there. Actually, your, your hearts are your reputation. Those are essentially victory points. You're trying to get the most. So on your turn, you'll either gather or enchant. Most times you're gonna be gathering because you're trying to gather those resources that you will then use to enchant. Every player starts with a hand of three artisan dragons in hand and one fancy dragon in hand. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But looking at these cards, they may inform where you might want to go. Because when you gather, you follow a very particular order. You first are going to gain any goods, coins, and dragons listed uh, at the shop. You may place a uh, artisan dragon there and gain a reward. You can fire up an artisan dragon there. And then if there's a shop ability, you can do that. So knowing that I've got two meat dragons and a potion dragon, I likely am gonna to go to a store where I can play one of those. So let's say that I wanna get myself some bread. So I'll go to critical roles here, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gather the resources that are there. So in the case of this one, these are the, these are the six starter shops with the six starter dragons that you'll see in every game, all right? And so, this is the bread shop, critical roles here. So since this was the starting dragon and this is the store, I'm gonna be getting two bread, all right? Because you get what the store produces and then what any dragons there produce as well. At the beginning of the game, it's just gonna be the starter dragon. So I'd go ahead and take those two bread and I'd put them in my supply. The next thing that I may do is place one of these artisan dragons and gain a reward. So these meat dragons uh, are potential. I can place them in either one of these two spots because it tells you this one either needs a bread or a meat dragon, this one needs a, a meat dragon. If I go to this spot, I'm gonna gain a coin, which is very nice because this is a wild resource. If I go here, I'm gonna get a fancy dragon, which is nice because those are scoring opportunities, either in game or end game. So let's go ahead and place hot dog here in this spot and get myself a coin. All right, so right now I've got two bread and a coin. I still have cutlet and venti in my hand. Once I've placed it, now I can fire up one of those dragon abilities. So six different types of dragons and every type has the same fire up ability, all right? And so in this case, I have the choice of either of these two. I can either draw an artisan dragon from the park over here, or I can place another 
uh, artisan dragon somewhere in town and get that associated reward. So I choose one or the other of those two fire up abilities and I can do that. Let's say that I want to get a another artisan dragon in hand. Maybe I'll go ahead and get Rusty from the park there and now Rusty is in my hand. All right, I've done the fire up ability and then if there was a shop ability, I could use that. The starter shops never have shop abilities, but later shops that you place in the game might have them and they would be listed in this black banner right here. All right, you've got a stack of 10 other shops that you can put out later on in the game. At the end of your turn, if there were new shops, you'd flip them over, you refill the park here of dragons, and then the next player is gonna go. You continue to either gather, gather, gather these resources, or then enchant. These are enchantment cards that are laid out here on the board. There's always going to be five of them. And to go to those, to, to enchant, you have to go to an associated shop and spend the resources. So if at a later time, somebody uh, had two potions and three leaves, remembering that coins can always be wild resources, you can go to a gem shop, you pay the resources that uh, are required, and then you gain the associated rewards. In this case, you gain four reputation and an artisan dragon. Once you've done that, you're gonna place this card behind the shop, and now when you go there to gather, you're gonna get more resources. So in this case, now you'd be getting three gems when you go there. The other thing that happens when you uh, enchant is that you can fire up all the dragons at that shop, not just one, in any order you like. And so it's more efficient if you enchant at a shop that has multiple dragons placed there because then you get more abilities. That doesn't always work out. Whenever a shop is completely filled with dragons, that's when you're gonna be placing out a new shop. And at the end of your turn, you would flip that over, and now you've got a new shop that you can visit that's gonna have some type of a, uh, a shop ability, in this case, at Spellfire Springs. If you, after you went through the whole, uh, the whole turn, you would gain your goods, place an artisan dragon if you want, fire up an ability if you want. You could then pay two potions to fire up the last artisan dragon you fired up there two more times. So there are a number of different cards in the game. Some of them give you standard resources. Some of them will give you an artisan dragon when you visit. Some of them you can get any resource you want. Here you're getting three coins when you go there. So the non-starter shops have a little bit more going on. All right, so let's just quickly talk about the different uh, fire up abilities, just so you have an idea on how those go. Let me grab another one of these. And I think we've got all six represented. All right, so for the iron dragons, again, they all have the same firing ability, even if they have different dragons on there. Here, Wingnut is an iron dragon. You gain two of one good from either the shop or from a dragon there. So it's a way for you to gain more goods. The gem dragons allow you to gain three different goods. So they just have, oops, sorry, sorry about that. They just have to be distinct from each other. All right, so you couldn't get two meat and a bread, for example. The meat dragons allow you to place a new artisan dragon in town, and that could do a couple of different things. You're gonna get uh, an, a boon every time you place a dragon, but it also could allow you to fill up shops and, and things along those lines. Suz the Suzette here is a bread dragon. The bread dragon's ability allows you to draw an artisan dragon from the shop. The potion dragons here allow you to swap with another artisan dragon in town and fire it up. So it allows you to move them around. And then finally, the plant dragons are very, very friendly. They allow you to gift a good of your choice to another player to earn two reputation. And so again, all of the artisan dragons of those types have the same fire up abilities. The game is gonna be, the game end is going to be triggered when either the deck of artisan dragons run out or the enchantment deck runs out. At that point, everybody, including the player who triggered the last uh, round, will get one more action. You will total up your points and the winner will be the one with the most points or reputation. Where are you getting your points? Most of your points are gonna be gathered throughout the game by doing enchantments. However, there are 
these fancy dragons. Everybody starts the game with fancy dragons. There are two different types. There are sun dragons that you will score during the game. So at this point, you could play chonkers here during the game to gain one reputation for you each unique good you pay. So if you have a bunch of extra goods, you can get up to six reputation there. If you had one of each of the goods, you could pay those. There are also moon fancy dragons that are all end game scoring. So at this point, one reputation for each starter shop with a matching artisan dragon icon. So those are all end game points and you can collect more fancy dragons throughout the game by placing artisan dragons. There are some other ways you might potentially do that, but that's going to be where you're getting your points most throughout the game and then some for these moon dragons at the end of the game. All right, that is Flamecraft in a nutshell. Let's let you know what we think about it. I think the components for this game are fantastic for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. I did point out in the overview that I showed some of the deluxe components as well. So not everything that I showed are necessarily going to be in the retail edition. So I did point that out. I did have one small complaint about the production. I know that they were very eager to be like, hey, let's have this cool long board. Ah. That's not particularly useful when the shop I'm looking at is way down there. I would have preferred all the shops to be in the middle, and I don't need to look carefully at, say, the magic cards, whatever they're called. The, the, the enchantment cards. The card. enchantment yeah. cards. Yeah. I can just see the symbols on them. Right. Yeah. That's, that's minor. Um, I'll, that's 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 basically my only thing. Other than that, I thought the components are very easy to tell apart. Uh, the rules are very yes. very clear. Mm -hmm. um, the special abilities on the cards were not particularly difficult to figure out. The rule it was just it, it's a good production, very yeah. good. Yeah, I agree. I think, but I also do agree with the the, the quibble about uh, the the table. Not only the length; it's a it's a table hog. It, it really is. It takes up a lot yeah. of table space, uh, and that's something you do have to to keep in mind. But I also do agree that the rules were were wonderful and. The only time you really have clarifications, I think, are on the shop abilities because all of the dragon's abilities are the same. There's those six, you know, fire abilities. Once you've got those, pretty straightforward. The shop abilities can get a little tricky, but every time I had a question, I looked in the rule book, they had a clarification. It was right there. That's, That's good. nice. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the positive interaction in this game. Mm -hmm. You go to a shop, and as dragon, more dragons get on that shop than when you're scoring or whatever that is thing that you put on the top. Enchanting. Enchanting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. whenever you do that. So other people have made that shop stronger for you, so you then can take all of those awesome abilities that are on mm -hmm. those dragons. If I go to a shop where your dragon is currently at, I give you something. Like, I just, I like all of that positive interaction. That's when you on. enchant a shop it starts producing more things. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of positivity loop going on. I appreciate yeah. Wendy's positive outlook on that, but it ain't no positive. <laughs> when I go to shop, I'm giving it to you because you're forcing me to. You're just standing out Not because I want to give you something. Don't they call it like a friendly, like required gift or something like sure. that? Sure, like yeah, you're just giving like gifts. Like call spade is Mandatory spade. gifts. Tom My Hanks giving gifts. My daughters gave each other presents so that they could catch up to me in scoring. Mm -hmm. um, you put a dragon, I put a dragon out grudgingly because I know you're going to go there and get the benefits from it. I don't know if she's about friendly. I know what you mean, <laughs> but the game doesn't feel mean. No, and but, no. I think by design. I think that that is something that they were going for, for kind of like the, the design philosophy, if I can sound a little highfalutin there, is that I think it is really all about positive interaction. There's nothing that you're going to ever steal from somebody necessarily. Yeah. Um, you know, there is a, a particular dragon's ability that allows you to uh, gift somebody a uh, a good for two points, and so I think that just kind of Which feeds actually, into the whole. One of the best ratios of points in the game. Mm. Yeah. So I, yeah. I was going through and doing the math on yeah. this, and that might, it's not the best, but it's pretty close. It's pretty good, and if you're able to do that a couple of times on a turn, like let's say you're enchanting a shop that has two or three of those, that's six points right there, baby. Yeah, it's pretty Big good. Stuff. It is. That was one of the loudest snaps I've ever heard in my life. I hope the microphone reacts. Uh, well, anywho, <laughs> one of the things this game has is a very unique arc. Mm -hmm. um, in that you start off, you're like, oh, I got a few resources, and yeah. pretty soon you're like, oh, mm -hmm. and you have tons of resources. Mm -hmm. But the bringing out the new stores is interesting. Yeah. Uh, every game of this I've played, one shop has been kind of like, sadly. <laughs> alone, yeah. and no one wants to go there near the end of the game because, mm -hmm. well, there's just there's not a lot of dragons there. Right. No yep. one enchanted at that spot, and then the new shops they're trying to tempt you in with these special abilities. Yes. But you're like, but I also get five resources if I go over here, right? And eventually you you crumble because you need points. So I just right. found it interesting that the the way the shops come out, 
Um, I, I, you, I was very concerned when I first played that I couldn't remember what all the dragons did. Oh boy! But yeah. you do memorize that like five minutes in the game because you use them it's all quick. the time. That is one of my favorite elements of the game, and it's one of the things that I think is going to keep gamer gamers from being really enamored with this. I like the fact that they didn't have 15, 16 different artisan dragon abilities. Once oh you've gosh. got those six, you know it. You, every time you see a plant dragon, you know what it does. Every time you see a potion dragon, you know what it does. They ca very easily could have made those all unique, and you'd have to like read the card and understand. And that would be fine if that's the game they're trying to make, but I don't think that's what they're going for here, and I really appreciate it. It makes it so much easier to teach. So much easier to teach. And I still think there are plenty of decisions to make for the weight of the game. And oh, like yeah. you said, oh, sorry, oh, uh, it, it matches that idea of this game was kind of driven by the art. Mm -hmm. This very pleasant, cute, happy village kind of art. Right. It makes me think, um, I'm not very familiar with all of the, um, the farming games, what are those called, like the uh, Stardew Valley and those type of things. Yeah. That is what kind of... Emotion, Actually, that's I got really from good. This. Yeah, it does yeah, look the, like and remind you of kind those. Of vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both in in art and in and just that friendliness of, of gameplay. Yeah, a lot of positive feedback loops. I mean, every turn you're doing something that you want to be doing. There never feels like there's a wasted turn in this game. You're going somewhere. Even the early ones, you're setting yourself up for for later things. You're going mm -hmm. to places that are going to utilize the dragons you have in your hand, and then later in the game, like you said, you're either getting these great uh, uh, gather turns where you know they. They tell you there's a limit of seven per item, and sometimes you get there. Um, you're getting a whole bunch of stuff, or you're enchanting and then triggering, you know, fire up abilities, hopefully of two or three dragons. It just feels very, very satisfying. Did you feel like the game was very procedural? Like, do you feel like the procedural nature of take this action, do these five steps, did that kind of get in the way of playing it sometimes or teaching it? I just, it was something I had to emphasize to new players because you're right. But the reason, I, I think I understand the reason why is because the order of operations matters. A you know lot. what I mean? Because, you know, you're placing a dragon before you choose to fire, an, you know, one of the abilities. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, it is procedural and, the, and it is easy to forget things. There are certain things, matter of fact, in the rule book, I think they even mention some things that are easy to forget. Yeah, but they have those cards. The card tells you exactly what to oh, do. Oh, it does. It does, yeah, and it I tells like you the order. Player I like card, it. Yeah. yeah, the player aid cards are great, and there's one for every player, which uh, is essential. And they I shouldn't that. have to applaud that. You should shouldn't have to. It, it should, should be, be the, 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 the industry standard, but <laughs> it, it is a bit procedural. Um, it's easy to forget to put out a new shop when a shop fills up. There That's are, the one yes. thing yeah. I always forgot yeah. that I had to remember. Yeah, there are little things like that, but but it didn't bother me after the first game, you know. Okay. I also really liked the morning and nighttime cards. Yeah, the, the little, fancy little, dragons. Yeah, the fancy dragon objective things mm -hmm. that you get to play throughout the game. Yeah. I do wish that they were a little bit more obvious what was morning and night, because I know I mm. mixed that up personally as we were playing, because it's just like a tiny icon in the corner. Yeah. The color of the cards, all the same, all of that. Mm -hmm. And so I started playing them, and then I was like, oh, I realize I can't score that yet. Can't score it yet, not till the yeah. end of the game, yeah. Hmm. All right, well, what do you think, Mike, overall? You were inclined to like this. So. Now, why was I inclined to like it? I'd like to know why. It's very thin. You've been talking about this for a long time before it came. Okay, because as soon as I saw it, I thought it looked really cute. You're right. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, I, and I've and i mentioned this before, that I, the aesthetics of a game really do matter to me, but, but if the game's no good, it's not going to be enough. It's just not. I mean, it may help a bit, but this is a game that I feel like does everything it sets out to do. It, be, it, it does build this beautiful little world, but I think the mechanics of the game are just right as far as the ratio of rules to decisions that you make. Um, I do feel like there are compelling decisions. The game did not play itself. I do feel like, you know, quote unquote, the better player will win more often than not. There is randomness. There clearly is randomness anytime you're drawing from decks. That's going to happen, but overall, I think the game is outstanding, and outstanding to me means at least an 8.5, and that's where I'm coming. 8.5. Nice, Chris. All right. uh, I'm coming a bit lower. I'm giving this a 7.5, mm -hmm. and that's because I, I don't know. I found that a lot of players would have that hiccup of like forgetting a little thing, doing stuff out of order. Uh, just that I found the game a little bit procedural, mm. but it's really, really charming, and I think that's the thing. Is I think I, I was really charmed by this. Um, and I love that positive feedback loop of things just keep getting better. The new the new shops come out, yeah. and they have some enticing ability that changes up the game a little bit. You use, you talk about the example of like throwing resources on the market of dragon cards. 
that's a thing that might not come out every game. Mm-hmm. But that's really cool that a new shop might do something different like that to kind of catch you and say, oh, okay, I see where this is going. So, uh, not one. I think that I'm charmed by it more than I would want to keep coming back mm-hmm. to it. So for me, seven point five. Okay, I'm giving it a seven point five. Um, but I, I am very charmed by it. I do think it's very cute, and I feel like that is a big deal for me because I often am first, you know, mechanisms. Yeah. All the way. Um, but it's very cute. I like the tactile of the pieces. I really enjoy the shops and the way that the mm-hmm. shops work. Like, there's so much build and growth to them. But also, at the beginning of them, there's so many options still. You know, you can put two two possible dragons mm-hmm. in each one of the locations, but it changes. And so you're like, oh, everyone put the meat dragons out. Nobody else can put a meat dragon out. I have to put something else. I, I just really like the way that the shops are organized mm-hmm. and how they build and grow. So 7.5, I think it's fun. Yeah, I, I mean, the cuteness is definitely there, and I really like that. This is this art style is not particularly much different than our art style that we use for Dice Guys. That's true, actually. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. very similar in many regards. I tend to like this. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the game itself, there's nothing particularly outstandingly unique about it, mm-hmm. um, with the exception of the way cards move around. Right. Um, so each card is a dragon, so there's like, oh, it's two resources of the same type. But the first time you switch a dragon is interesting because now there's different cards and right. you add dragons. I don't think there's... I, I'm trying to remember now if they offset the first player advantage. They, they might have or not. They, they do. The, but, they, yeah. but here's the thing. I don't think it's even that big of a deal. Right. Because whoever goes first is setting up cool other stuff players. for other people to go to. Yes. Yep. And I really like that aspect. And I joked earlier about the friendly things, but I really like games that do that. Mm-hmm. Um, the being able to give to other people. There is not enough of these strong, solid, medium weight games. There just isn't. Mm -hmm. Euro games tend to be particularly complex or very simple and boring. This fits that middle spot of which I think maybe five come out over the course of a year. It irritates me (laughs) because this is the kind of game that I would like to see. My kids played it with me. They loved it. I liked it a lot, you know, and I'm giving it a nine. I really enjoy this one. Um, I love the theme. I love how it plays. It does not overstay its welcome. No. It gets super exciting for you because you're just like, oh, <laughs> there's a seven limit? Oh, no. Yeah. You know? Right. And, you know, that's sort of, I have seven. Well, here, I have a piece of bread for two, <laughs> two points, points for me. <laughs> and this, you're right. The shops change every game, mm-hmm. and I like that. It's it's There's already diversity, mm-hmm. a little bit extra diversity per game. It's fun. So that's Flamecraft. And, oh, also, different art on every shop card. Yes. Every yeah. shop card, different and art. And the puns. We and didn't mention puns. the puns. Oh, they are clever. All right, let's move on. I my, my kids all rolled <laughs> their eyes, and then they're like, is everything in this game a pun? I was like, yes. yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Adults play this mm. game. <laughs> Adults love this game. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so check it out. That's Flamecraft. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Mike Delicio. Have fun. Breathe in fire. Bread dragon.